In this video, we're going to go through a CFA level one style question on depreciating long term assets using the double declining balance method. You see, the thing I notice is that most people are pretty capable of computing depreciation under the straight line method. That's nice and simple. However, many candidates fail to get the points when asked to perform accelerated depreciation, of which the double declining balance method is a prime example. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, keep watching and let's get solving. So, this is the question that I want you to have a go at. A company has just completed the acquisition of a machine with the following financial characteristics. Purchase price, 800,000 euro. Estimated residual value, 65,000 euro. Expected useful life, five years. If the company uses the double declining balance method to account for the machine's depreciation, the depreciation expense recognized in respect of the second year of the asset's operation is closest to a. 320,000 euro, b. 300,000 euro, or c. 192,000 euro. So let's start by computing the depreciation rate. The trick here is to appreciate that under the double declining balance method, this rate is double what it would be if we were following the straight line approach. Now, we are told in the question that the asset has an expected useful life of five years. And if you are thinking in terms of straight line depreciation, five years obviously translates into an annual rate of 20%. Please appreciate that the only thing I've done here is I simply took 100,000% and divided it by five, the number of years to arrive at this result. I am certainly not performing any more complex computations, which would, for example, take into account the estimated residual value of the asset at the end of its useful life. We now need to take this 20% and double it, thus arriving at 40%. And this is the rate that we are actually going to apply to the scenario. So let me please stress this point. When we say that the depreciation rate under the double declining balance method is double the rate uh, from the straight line method, I want you to approach this in the most simple, unsophisticated way. Base your straight line computations on the estimated useful life only, i.e. five years in this case. Don't Please don't start calculating the actual depreciation expense, which would necessitate considering residual values. Don't go there, it's a dead end. So let me do a little table over here to help keep things organized. I'm going to have the year in this, oh, let's have it over here, in this leftmost column, um, then opening NBV, where NBV naturally stands for net book value. Um, so basically the assets carrying amount. Then the depreciation expense uh, for the year. And whenever you see me write this, or here DEP apostrophe N, it stands for, or it's short for depreciation. Uh, so we've got this, and the last column is going to be the closing NBV. So the net book value at the end of the year. And starting with year one, our opening NBV um, here is going to naturally be the asset's original purchase price. Let's check what that was in the question. Here it is, so 800,000 euro or 800,000 euro. And we now apply this double declining balance rate of 40% and we apply it to this opening NBV. So times 40% to get the depreciation expense 
uh, for the year, um, 800,000 times 40% is going to give 320,000. I don't necessarily need a calculator for that. And what does this produce in terms of closing NB NBV? 800,000 minus 320,000. That's going to give 480,000. Nice and simple in year one. Please notice that I applied the depreciation rate directly to the opening NBV without making any adjustments for the asset's residual value. This is a really critical point, and this is where many candidates get things wrong. Now, this 480,000 naturally becomes the opening carrying amount for year two. So 480,000. And I am once again going to apply 40% to this so as to compute the depreciation in respect of the year. Okay, 40% of 480,000 is, and I'm going to use the calculator, 0 0.4 times 480,000. The result comes in, as you can see, at 192,000. And let's see what this is going to give in terms of the closing NBV, put a minus in front of that figure and at add 480,000, the opening NBV, as you can see, closing NBV is therefore 288,000. Uh, now, I believe that this result allows us to answer the question. Um, this is what the question was actually uh, asking for. Let's have a look. The depreciation expense recognized in respect of the second year of the assets operation is closest to. And as you can see, the result we just arrived at corresponds with answer C. So let me write that official solution down over here. Now, throughout this example, I've been telling you to ignore the information concerning the asset's estimated residual value. And yes, in the context of this question, this 65,000 euro figure is completely redundant. You don't need it. In fact, it's there just to confuse you. However, there is one potential use for this number, and it's in relation to what happens in the final year of the asset's life. When you compute the depreciation expense for that final year, you should make it whatever number gets you to a closing NBV that is equal to the estimated residual value. Let me show you what I mean by just carrying this example beyond what was required by the question. Okay, so we stopped over here as at the end of year two with a closing NBV and I'm going to do the subsequent years. So years three, four, five, really quickly just to show show you what I mean um, by, uh, by what I said just a moment ago about what we need to do in the final year. So this 288,000 goes here as the opening balance for um, year three. Now let's multiply this by the constant 40% depreciation rate. So that's going to produce 115,200 depreciation expense for the year. Uh, 288 uh, minus 155. Uh, Let's see what this is, 288 minus 115, 200 is going to give a closing balance of 172,800. Let's take this forward to the next year, 172,800 times 40%. Obviously in the exam, never go beyond what the question is asking for. I'm doing this only for educational purposes. So the depreciation expense in respect of year four is 69,120. Plug a minus in front of that figure, add 172,800. Okay, this is 103,680. And we start with this same number in year five. And if I applied, if I applied 40% over here, 
let's see what we would actually get times 0 0.4 I would get a result of 41,472 and look what would happen if I deducted this figure from the opening balance of 103,680 I would get 62,208 however this result would be below the estimated residual value of the asset as supplied in the question. So what I'm going to do is actually replace this number with what we were given up front, 65,000 euro, and I'm going to make the depreciation expense equal to whatever figure gets us from here to here. So let's check what that is. I'm going to take 103,680 and deduct the desired 65,000. And as far as I can see, this produces a year five depreciation expense of something completely different to this. It's actually the, uh, the missing figure, 38,000. 680 and this would be your depreciation expense in the uh, final year of the assets operation if you are ever asked about this okay so please just be aware of the need to take this little trick into account just in case